jobs. Is that the tip of the iceberg? Is uh, that an idiosyncratic story? Or is this, uh, you know, something that is a tea leaf for what's to come? Yeah, well, Ben Laidler was brilliant on this this morning, and he was absolutely key to the tech angst. is way overdone. He says, look, Amazon is exiting 1%, maybe a little bit more of their employees, and they're hiring in key areas while they lay off people. Yeah. I, I, I have real trouble carrying the text angst over the greater economy. And talking about angst, we are seeing more shutdowns over in China, and there it's not feeding more, through. More, Hold more. on a sec, but it's not feeding through to markets because <clears throat> you are seeing a bit of a lift. You're seeing the NASDAQ up uh, nearly four-tenths of a percent. The s &P, it's a little bit of a, no, but hold on a second. This is a little bit of a lift. And how much is it, despite the negativity that you heard in China, despite the fact that there's a bit of cold weather in, in Europe, there's a sense that people are kind of pushing fast past these things. Yeah, I would mention 88.77 on Brent crude's Stephen Shork moments ago, look for the Shork interview in its entirety out on digital. Maybe it'll get out on YouTube. $88.78 on Brent crude. I mean, I hung on every word that Mr. Shork said. If there was a clinic on oil up to our eyeballs, could you get under $70 a barrel West Texas Intermediate up to the legitimate angst? I believe he said Allentown, uh, Pennsylvania. Uh, it, with a dearth of diesel fuel this morning. And we heard the OECD earlier this morning talking about the energy crisis really fueling a lot of what we've seen in terms of the inflation on the yield space. You are seeing it come in just a touch, although still very deeply inverted yield curve. We haven't talked about this, but the gap between twos and tens has uh, is still staying around the lowest, going <clears throat> back the m most negative since 1981, to give yeah. you a sense. Well, we're going to recalibrate. Why don't you bring in Mr. Quinlan here? Ms. I'm sure he's done this before. He's done this He's before. To a new year before. Joe Quinlan, head of CIO Market Strategy at Merrill and Bank of America Private Bank, joining us now. Joe, how do you recalibrate for next year, given the complete lack of clarity? Well, it's going to be tough heading into the new year, Lisa. We're looking at a recession here in the United States, shallow, first half of next year. Europe, I think, is already in recession. And China's flatlining. That's around 65% of world GDP. So it's a choppy market into 23. But we do think on the other side, say, Second quarter, third quarter of next year, we're going to be buyers of equities. We're going to reset here in the United States. We'll lead the way. But it's a chop and a churn as we go through the central bank tightening, pandemic in China, and recession energy-related in Europe. So it's very choppy. How much does that really hinge, the sort of bullish call in the second half of next year, hinge on a quick deterioration in the economy and a quick response from central bankers? Well, I think we're seeing – the the downturn in the economy. And I think if the Fed just pauses in January and February, not necessarily, you know, have to cut, that's kind of the, the green light for the equities to kind of to, to rebuild, put that base in for the for the next bull market. So they don't have to start cutting. We don't, I don't think they're going to be cutting anytime soon, but just a pause, let the medicine work, see how quantitative tightening is working its way through the economy, how the consumer's hanging in there. You talk about the labor market for sure. So I think we just need a pause to kind of build, build the bottom for the bull market. Joe, the pause is there, and it hinges on inflation. OECD came out with an inflation call today where global inflation next year, again, with all the angst in Europe, 6.8%. Let's be optimistic. It's lower in America. I think we can do that in Bank of America. No doubt would lead on that, uh, Michael Gapin and, and, and the rest. Joe Quidlin, does inflation actually come down enough next year in America? I think it does, Tom. I really do, because you're going to see the productivity gains come back. You're seeing the economy weaken. Commodity prices have rolled over. Um, when you talk to kind of the people in the energy patch, materials, their costs are, you know, their material costs are coming down. So I think I'm not in the deflation camp. It's hard landing when it comes to having prices come down hard. But I do think we're headed in the right direction. And Europe, by the way, is going higher, as you mentioned. And Japan could be an outlier as well. So I think inflation comes down significantly in next year that we it gives it gives the fed pause and the markets a lift to look forward into 20 deeper into 23 into 24 well okay we get a pause and then we lift is it a lift with quality i mean joe quinlan you've been known for decades with a comfort in quality ownership to find what that is is it a free cash flow analysis is it a consistency of revenue analysis it's going to be core competencies, Tom. It's going to be brands. It's going to be good management. I, and I think it's going to be the global breadth that matters as well. You know, when the Fed is done raising rates, the dollar is going to peak roll over. So multinationals will have their day again, so to speak. We're looking for a second half recovery in Europe. 
Europe's a big market for U.S. multinationals. Reflation in China and the rest of Asia is going to help drive. So we're looking for large cap quality names to push ahead with healthcare, technology, financials, materials, industrials in particular. You know, Tom, we've got it. We got a big story out there that we're not ready to talk about, and that's the rebuild of Ukraine. Now it's too early to talk about that, given what's happened.